You're going to a very dangerous place, so be careful. The thing that slumbers there, it is not human. Here's your look at the NECA Toys Pan's Labyrinth. This is The Pale Man. One of Guillermo del Toro's most visually stunning films, Pan's Labyrinth is a dark yet beautiful fantasy set five years after the Spanish Civil War. The insidious brutality of the real world continues to cast a long shadow, infiltrating even the fantasy world of 11-year-old Ophelia, who begins a terrifying reality-spanning journey after meeting a mysterious fawn in a crumbling labyrinth. Her mystic quest crosses seamlessly from one world to the other, weaving a parable about the power and pain of innocence. I'm going to go ahead and take the tape measure and figure out how tall the pale man stands and to the very top of his head. According to the Ultra Measuretron 5000, the figure stands at 7.6 inches in height, which in centimeters works out to be 19.3 centimeters tall. Though, unfortunately, the figure doesn't come with his buffet table. That would probably be a considerable sized piece for NECA to include. At the very least, it does come included with its throne chair. The chair is a really nice recreation to the one that's featured in the film. And again, while it unfortunately doesn't sit at the head of a table, which could be right here, I guess you could construct something in which the pale man could sit in front of. A uh, lesson certainly to be learned in this is don't take from the pale man's buffet table because certainly bad things will happen as a result of it. The, uh, the chair is very heavy, actually. I understand that it is made of all plastic, but there's a weight to it that I do appreciate. Also appreciate for the fact that NECA couldn't really use this mold for anything else. So for the fact that they would break the cost of producing a brand new tooled mold like this, is greatly appreciated by this collector. It's got some very intricate little details to it. You can sort of see like the knots and the little lines there that would be on natural wood. They've done a great job of also painting it, so it does look like it would be of an aged wood. Not really sure the type of wood, and I'm not going to even gamble to guess the type of wood that would have been used to construct this chair, but it's got some exquisite scroll deco there featured on the back of it. I like that it's raised from the rest of the chair, and even like the back, the back wood is a darker color to the wood that's in the foreground, so it just gives you that sense of depth when you look at it. Even areas in which you wouldn't necessarily expect or demand to have uh, details added, like the undersides of the chair or the undersides of the feet, are still sculpted in here for the chair. Nicely done. The front part, the back of the chair, as well as the seat of the chair, look like it could be done in a leather, for example, leather finish. It's been only painted here, but it's then, again, gives you the feel, the vibe, that this could actually have been a real cushioned chair. So again, really nicely done from NECA Toys. We'll put that down right there. We'll also have a look at the little tiny plate, which is featuring adorning these little tiny peepers, the eyes of the pale man. Again, the only bittersweet irony to all of this is the first time we see the plate sitting on top of a table. And unfortunately, again, no table can be found for this release of Pale Man. I guess at the very least you could probably display it maybe on the arm of the chair. I guess if you wanted to you could put the arm right there. Kind of pretend that he has not taken the eyes and put them into his hands. Um, again there's really no other place where you can put it. The, uh, the plate is very accurate to the way it looks in the film. Even like the very bright, very bright pupils, there we go, is done very well here from again from NECA. The plate almost has a coloring an off tint of green 
It's got a sheen also to it that is found nowhere else on this set. So it's nice that it's just, it sort of stands out despite, you know, its smaller size. So it does come with that as well. Unfortunately, the one thing I kind of wish that this this figure could have also included, he unfortunately doesn't. While I love the figure itself, capturing the eerie creepiness that the Pale Man has in the film, I kind of also wish that NECA would have also included a secondary head. Don't get me wrong, I love this head sculpt here. A very vacant portrait here. Vacant until, of course, you have the eyes portrayed there on either side of his head. But again, because um, because in the film, for example, when he's eventually chasing her down the hallway, uh, what I would have loved to have also seen was an inclusion of a head that you could have removed out and put in place where it would have had the slightly more screaming pale man as he's pursuing down the hallway. Uh, blood soaked around the certainly the mouth area. Part of me would have loved that this could have been a hinge something that you could have been open, able to open and close, kind of in the same way that they did with the aliens. And I guess the reasoning why they didn't do that is because the, I don't know if you would call this the gizzard uh, of the side folds of his face, I guess there's really no place where they could have put it a hinge without it being extremely noticeable. It would have also cost them having two molds, one being the lower half in which the mouth would have been open and closing. That would have attached then to the upper, tor the upper head placement here. But again, maybe that could have been just uh, something in a case where you could have just removed the head, put a new head sculpt in, because I really would have loved a screaming head sculpt as well. Something, again, that had the blood all over the lower half of around the mouth area. That being the case, and accepting the loss of not an extra head sculpt, again, it's a fantastic looking head as well as a body, which we will spend some much needed time talking about. Of course, the reveal is would be the eyes here present on these in inner palms of the pale man. Um, you can have it still like it was in the film in which the arms, you kind of have to bring the arms a little bit up. There we go. But you can't simulate the look that he has in the film. Something that we had never ever seen up to this point. The fact that you would have a creature with eyes in its hands and being able, that being the only way that it could visibly see. Even when he's chasing her down the hallway, he's using his hands, of course, as the means to, to see where exactly he's going. Something else that they could have also included was hands that could have removed out, replacing it with hands that would have had some blood soaked all over it. Again, you probably see a pattern forming here. I'm sort of suggesting things I would like to see, uh, even further pushing how scary this creature was in the film. I think it would have added just a little bit extra element to it by being able to incorporate bloodied hands and a bloodied face as well. But again, that's just me. I'm morbid like that. The hands are done really, really well. No articulation, of course, can be afforded to the eyes. That would be a very small feat to accomplish. The hands are nicely discolored with some patches of purple, patches of pink, and patches of a lighter flesh tone. Even love in the film where he's tapping the, the, dinner, well, the dinner table as she's feasting away on the banquet. I adore this head sculpt. The, the head sculpt, it's funny that little has to be added to this and yet still convey the same feelings I had when I first saw the Pale Man in the film. Um, the body is just as malnourishedly presented as it was in the, uh, in the movie. Very much just flaps and folds of skin, sort of just draping their way down its body. I don't know what this thing would have initially looked like as it continued to feed, but I mean, judging by really the images in which you see him cutting and eating uh, the younger children, it doesn't even look like then it was a full bodied figure. So I'm wondering what this would have looked like if it was, you know, full. Um, of course, that would involve many, many deaths of poor, poor little innocent children that decide to, uh, you know, venture out into the unknown. Uh, the skin flaps are really done well here, both in the arms as well as in the body. I love that everything really on this guy sags. It's basically like as if you took a figure that's plastic and you just melted it. It just looks like it's draped, melted plastic, just falling its way down its body. 
Uh, very, very malnourished, sort of. You got the rib cage happening right here, but then again, the flaps of the stomach as they just drape their way down. Even like the legs are just loose fat. It's just like loose, flabby skin that's just draping its way down its body. Even like the feet, like the discoloration that they've added in the toes where they've added the additional purple there. The undersides of its feet are unique to also one another. That's a nice thing as well. I was going to say a nice feet. There are peg holes on the undersides of its feet. I don't really know why necessarily there would be. I guess unless you wanted to have it moving, you could probably make use of a display stand. I just so happen to have a display stand right here. So for example, you could just pick that into place. And uh, you know, again, if you wanted to have it not quite posed in its chair, providing you could get the balance, and this is only my first attempt doing this, providing you could get the balance just right, you could have it as if yeah, I like the look of that as well. You could have it as if the pale man is walking through the hallway as well, kind of sort of staggering its way, trying to find its bearings. Again, a really fantastic specimen here from NECA Toys. There are some elements of it where you can kind of see ball joints, visible ball joints that, depending on where you're moving the body, you immediately are treated and like greeted if almost by these white ball joints wish that the ball joints could have been a different color i mean you're really not going to see it from the front so that's a hard unless you tilt the body really far back by its sectional parts are you really going to see those white noticeable ball joints so you probably aren't going to see it as much from the front as you are really going to see it more so from the back speaking of the back once again you've just got this flat posterior here on the pale man love even like the inner flaps are done in a darker shade of pink so it really does resonate for it just sort of looks like drapes drapes that are falling lifelessly against the window sill again really fantastic piece really fantastic also that NECA toys would give us a pale man making use of once again a mold and this is always something I like to talk about here, molds and how you can make use of existing molds that companies create. This would be a very hard mold to make use of anything else. So it's a gamble for NECA to really venture into a character that maybe not everybody is aware of. Not everybody has seen Pan, Pan's Labyrinth, for example. So the venture for many collectors to go out and pick up something like this is again, a gamble for NECA. So I, I respect the company more and more comes to pieces like this because other companies may not dabble into lesser known characters for the risk that a uh, utilized mold something that costs a lot of money to produce could then go to waste nicely done NECA toys for venturing into those little territories and I know they have the Guillermo del Toro uh, lineup They're, the whole signature collection really is still in full force and we're still going to be getting the Fawn and Ophelia I think actually Fawn is out now or it's coming out very soon I think Ophelia is the only one that we really haven't gotten yet I've had a look at Sante Sante already uh, previously on this channel so if you guys want to check that out and also of course had a look at the retro cloth Guillermo del Toro as well Okay, so let's have a look at this guy's posability. His head rotates all the way around. Luckily, none of the posability is restricted by the mold. The mold doesn't seem to limit. I mean, you get pretty much all the same stuff happening as what you would normally get on a regular bodied character. Again, the head rotates all the way around. Kind of, again, wishing that the mouth could have opened and closed. Maybe that's something that they could have done for a secondary head sculpt. You've got also, speaking of secondary, a secondary ball joint where this part of the neck, so it's basically like this here, is a separate appliance. And then you've got the rest of the body happening right here where instantly you're treated to a ball joint, which is then attached to a secondary ball joint, giving you a part here and a part here, all of which you can move independently from one another. The, uh, the arms, let's go ahead and rotate those all the way around. Arms rotate, they also hinge out. He has the double hinged elbow happening. That also lends itself quite well to getting the hands all the way bent up. You certainly could not have done this with a single hinged elbow. Now, realizing that, of course, not that they had planned secondary hinged elbows um, with the intent of doing Pale Man, but it's somewhat ironic the fact that now the company that is making use of a double hinge elbow works the best for a figure that needs to have a double hinge in order to accomplish the look that it's so iconic for. 
I suppose that is not necessarily irony, but just felt the need to mention that. So, as for the legs, I suppose the only restriction is, and it's only by a little bit, is the legs. The legs have a hinge, but the hinge works in such a way that, depending on which way the hinge is facing, so see it's facing this way, that means the leg can go this way. If you want the leg to go out, not sure why you would want to, you'd have to rotate the leg outward for the leg to hinge this way, if that makes any sense. Uh, it does have a bend at the knee, lower half, the lower half, lower leg rotates back and forth, and then it does also have possibility hinging up and down in the foot, and this also rocks back and forth. From a design standpoint, there's nothing really I would change to the way the figure looks right now, right at this minute. Debating, of course, which way I would want to display the figure. I guess it's iconic to have it facing or sitting in its chair before realizing that the girl is feasting onto his uh, buffet table. But I also kind of like the look of having it wandering the hallways, extending out the one hand, seeing where it needs to go, seeing where he can then grab and take the girl back with him. Um, it's a pose that really does look great for this figure, but I think I, I think I might just ultimately have it displayed in its chair. After all that, after me just going on for the next last couple of minutes talking about the way I would pose the figure standing upright, maybe I would display it in its chair. Not for the fact that I wouldn't want to have him walking through the halls, because I think that's just as scary. But I really wouldn't want a waste such as the sculpt that they put into this chair. I really wouldn't want that to go to waste. So I'll probably ultimately have the figure displayed in that, because I think it would look the best. And yet, despite that, even though my ramblings at the very end of not wanting to waste the chair, here in Final Looks, I decided to have him in a walking pose, just to show you a difference from the way that this initial review started. Love the look and sculpt of the Pale Man here. Really an iconic character. When you think of Pan's Labyrinth, I know most people often think of the Fawn, but in all honesty, the one that I always think of is the Pale Man. There's something that's burned into my mind, the idea that this creature was walking towards you with eyes in its hands. That's pretty scary. I uh, love the way that they were able to translate that into a plastic figure, and only NECA Toys, I think, would be the right company to do this. The Pale Man feels fully posable. He doesn't seem limited despite for the flaps of skin that you would think would occupy or hinder the posability of this figure. Quite the contrary. So really, if you did want to display the figure not in his chair, but instead a walking stance, you can accomplish that just as well as you would be able to accomplish that with a Jason Voorhees or any of the numerous posable figures that NECA has in their catalog. The Pale Man is a really nice recreation, like I said, of an eerie character in the film. The only thing I would have changed to this figure itself is maybe have the option of having a secondary head and a secondary pair of hands that both were soaked in blood. I know, that's awfully morbid of me. Other than that, though, a great pickup and some good news. If you are interested in picking this one up for yourself, the Pan's Labyrinth Pale Man is currently available now in comic book stores. He is a little bit more than, say, a conventional NECA release, being that you're also getting yourself a larger box with the chair included. I think works out to be about a 6 to $7 price point hike over the existing NECA toys pieces that you're probably picking up right now. So let's say, for example, if you're picking up NECA stuff for generally on average for about, say, $28, that's usually the price point that I'm picking these pieces up. Uh, Pale Man, by contrast to that, you're, you're probably paying closer to about $35 to $36 price, depending on where you can find this guy in stores. Today, we were having a look, though, at the NECA toys. This was Guillermo del Toro Signature Collection Pan's Labyrinth Pale Man. That's going to be a lot to put in the title. I'll see if I can wing it. Uh, speaking of winging it, actually, no, not speaking of winging it at all. That's, that's probably, no, that segue doesn't work. I just realized that segue doesn't work. We're going to ask the producer to reshoot. Producer's saying no. Uh, if you guys are interested, though, in checking out some more of my NECA releases, you can check out uh, the playlist that I've got on this channel specifically for NECA reviews. And while not, why not, while you're at it, I said, well, not producer says we're going to run with it anyways harsh harsh producer uh, if you guys haven't had a chance yet to hit that little subscribe button down below what are you waiting for more videos more NECA reviews will be coming soon to this channel so stay tuned for that thanks for watching guys and i'll see you next time